a recap of the electron configuration worksheet. Um, so the number of sublevels is equal to the energy level. So for instance, when n equals three, we have three sublevels uh, because uh, it goes from n minus one down to zero. If n equals three, we can have two, one, and zero, which represent s, p, and d. And specifically, we'd be talking about the 3s, the 3p, and the 3d. Um, so the sublevels go alphabetical after f. So the s, p, d, and f um, actually stand for, it just doesn't matter, but they stand for spin, principle, diffuse, and fundamental. And they have to do with the spectral lines that were used to recognize those sublevels. Like um, for the D orbitals, the spectral lines are very blurry. But, it, but at any rate, it, so whatever reason they chose S, P, D, and F, after F it goes alphabetical, G, H, I, J. So this is for values of L, right? when L equals zero S and so on. Um, okay. Um, the number of orbitals in a sublevel or the, which is related to different orientations the orbitals can have is related to this M sub L number. And the M sub L quantum number goes from positive L to zero to negative L in integer form. So the idea is when S uh, uh, when L equals zero, like an S, then there's only one orientation. There's only one orbital in that sublevel. When we have a P, which has an L of one, there's one, zero, minus one, we get three sublevels, right? And we would expect D to have five and F to have seven and so on. The number of electrons in those sublevels is two times the number of orbitals. So if I have one orbital, I can have two electrons. If I have three orbitals, I can have six. If I have five orbitals, I can have 10. So the number of electrons is two times the number of orbitals. Uh, let's continue. Um, the number of orbitals in an energy level, so we're not talking about the order of filling, but just how many electrons are in the third energy level? How many electrons are in orbitals that have a three or how many, orbitals are an energy level where it has a four. And so the rule, for the number of orbitals is equal to n squared. So for instance, when n equals one, one squared is one. There's only one s orbital and that's it, right? Um, when n equals two, two squared is four. There's an s and then there's three p for a total of four orbitals. When n equals three, then we would expect, uh, and three squared would be nine, which stands for an S and three P's and five D's, right? One plus three plus five equals nine. The number of electrons in an energy level is equal to two N squared. So because I can have two electrons per orbital. So if there's only one orbital, then I have, the first energy level can only have two electrons. That's why in the first period, there's only hydrogen and helium, right? Um, in the, second energy level where I have four orbitals, I can have eight electrons. And so that's why the second period is eight atoms across, uh, ending with neon, starting with lithium, right? And so on. Okay, um, reminding ourselves of the filling pattern on the periodic table that uh, for S and P, the energy level is equal to the period. So just looking at the periodic table, if I'm in the second period, beryllium would be 2s2, right? Or uh, if I was looking at phosphorus, it's the, it comes from the third period, that would be 3p123, or actually 3s2, 3p3, right? So for the s and p, the energy level is equal to the period, or the D, the energy level is equal to the period minus one. So for the D, so in the fourth uh, period, this is the 3D, right? We go 4S1, 4S2, 3D1, 2, 3, 4, 3D10 at zinc. Um, if we went down to the sixth period, this would be the 5D, right? So platinum would be expected to be 5D8, mercury would be 5D10, and so on. Um, when we go to the F, 
the energy level is equal to the period minus two. So when we, down here, this F block here, which starts with lanthanum, also called the lanthanide series, comes from the six period. So we got six S1, six S2, five D1. We put one electron in the five D, and then we go down four F1, two, three, four, to lutetium, which would be four F14. And then we'd go back up five D2, five D3, right? So the F is actually came from the six period. So this is the four F. This F came from the seventh period. So this would be the five F, right? We'd go seven S1, seven S2, 61, five F, one through 14 to Laurentium, and then back up to 62, 63, so on. Okay, so that's that. that the periodic table is really your best friend for doing the electron configurations. Using this, and following Hun's rule. Okay, um, so we saw um, noble gas configuration uh, is, is the configuration of a noble gas, which generally noble gas configuration means having an S2P6 for whatever energy level. The condensed electron configuration was you remove all of the electrons from the previous noble gas and you put the symbol of the noble gas in brackets, and then you show the other electrons normally. So if this is the full electron configuration of sodium, sodium element 11 has the pr most previous noble gas of neon, which is element 10. Uh, neon, of course, let's put neon on the side. Neon equal to 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So again, that following is the noble gases with the exception of helium are always s2p6. Um, and then, so we put neon in brackets, so meaning sodium has the electron configuration of neon plus 3s1, right? And so that's doing the condensed electron configuration. We saw that there were some exceptions. There's actually more exceptions than these, but these are actually the first exceptions we see on the periodic table. We're going to ignore exceptions in the F block. There's tons of exceptions in the F block, actually. But these ones we can actually explain pretty easily from a quantum mechanical perspective. Chromium and copper um, and the elements directly below them in their period, or in their group, I should say. Um, so they take one electron from the higher S and give it to the D. The D becomes lower in energy. So um, so elements that are starting to fill the D block, the, the filling the 3D have a full shell up to argon. So the expected for chromium was argon 4s2, 3d4. But the actual, uh, when they do the actual quantum mechanical calculations, what's actually lower in energy is argon 4s1, 3d5. So that perhaps was unexpected, but when we look at it and say, okay, it steals an electron, maybe I should show that in red or something, pink. How about pink? Okay, I'm gonna use pink. It steals an electron from the S and gives it to the D. When it does that, it gets a half-filled D block and it lowers the energy of the D block, making it lower than the 4S. So that's the explanation. Um, so copper uh, it has a similar motif. This is the expected electron configuration of copper, 4s2, 3d9. Um, actual, again, steals one from the s, gives it to the d, and you get a full d block. The full d block is lower in energy than the 4s. Um, also note that elements below them in the same group do the same thing. So molybdenum and tungsten we would expect to be d5. Uh, silver and gold we expect to be d d10 exceptions, right? Um, so for answering some more orbital filling patterns, uh, we remind ourselves that main group elements are the groups 1a to 8a, the tall columns. Um, they can also be called representative elements. It's just an older name for them. Okay. And so uh, there's some filling patterns. So usually, well, before I do paramagnetic and thiamatic, uh, representative elements are usually filling the S and P blocks. Uh, the transition metals are filling the D. And the inner transition, uh, the actinide and lanthanide, are filling the F, 
right? And you have to be specific when, when you answer those questions. Um, paramagnetic and diamagnetic. Uh, paramagnetic is an atom or ion that has one or more unpaired electrons. And these types of atoms will interact with the magnetic field. Um, so you can be paramagnetic, you, uh, other atoms, not just odd numbers, but you can have some even numbered atoms that follow Hund's rule that can have unpaired electrons, such as carbon, which is, I have an even number of electrons, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, but because of Hund's rule, filling the p block singly, I have unpaired electrons. So um, a single atom of carbon would interact with a magnetic field. Uh, diamagnetic, an atom or ion that has all electrons, I should say paired, okay. Um, and these kinds of elements avoid magnetic fields. And just having an even number does not mean you're diamagnetic. Actually, diamagnetic is very restricted, uh, at least for atoms. For things that are bonded, there are other, there are other things that can bond to get diamagnetic. But um, any atom with a, that ends with S2 or ends with D10, um, not an exception or ends with P6, or ends with F14. So it's a very, very small group compared to the overall periodic table. Okay, so that is the lab. Are there questions? Let me, let me stop here, and then I can...